Hello and welcome. My name is Simon Egel. I'm working for Autodesk and today I would like to talk about a quite interesting topic and it's about collaboration and how to improve collaboration when you're working on distributed or different locations. So how do we usually collaborate? Let's just imagine I have a project and I would like to create some um, scenes where I have a foreground and a background. For example, there's a product or a car in the foreground and I have a set, a studio set and a ramen set in the background. Or let's just say I would, make a I would like to make a comparison. I have a data A and data B and I would like to compare it. So how can I compare it in a real-time scenario? Usually what we do, and that's, that's a great way of doing, we exchange the data. So we send the data from A to B or we have a central storage where we can access the data and afterwards we have some kind of template where we import the data into our system. Then we can make comparison. This is working, that's quite a standard of working and it's working quite well. But nevertheless, we have some challenges here. So first of all, I need to have access to the data. I need to be allowed to, to um, access the data. At the same time, I need to want the other one to have access to my data. So I need to give my data away. I need to trust the other person that he can see my data. At the same time, I have just classic, classic issues. I need to upload, I need to download. Even with the fastest internet connection, it's going to take some time, some minutes, and so on. I still have some technical requirements. Probably if I load two huge data sets into one scene on one desktop, then well, probably my system is not fast enough. So there are just a couple hurdles on, um, on that makes things difficult when merging multiple projects and scenes together. So aren't there like other approaches or other like other ways on how to how to realize this? So in VRED we can work with streaming since 2021. And streaming technically means that I can stream my data from my VRED Pro desktop application or from my VRED Core Cloud application directly into a browser. So I can access high quality data on every device and everywhere. And streaming to the browser gives me some flexibility. So I can just get a data set, stream it to the browser, I can review it and even access and adjust it over there, the browser. Well, if this is working for one stream, it should also work for two, three or more streams together. So it's possible to pipe multiple streams into one website, into one browser. So I can review multiple streams at the same time, which are running on different instances. Again, could be on desktop computers, but could also be in the cloud. So how can I use this technology to merge, to merge this information together? Well, the answer is quite simple. You can just put the streams on top of each other. So you can see the, the streams layered on top of each other, which is working quite well. Of course, you need transparency for this, because if you have a foreground and a background, you just would like to see the object in the foreground and you don't want to cover the background with something in the foreground, right? Makes sense. So VRA 2021.3 is supporting transparency as well, so we can use it. So what does it mean? It technically means, as we can see here, that I can have multiple VRED instances running. It could be on the same computer, but it could be everywhere. It could be on two continents at the same time. And these different VRED instances can be streamed into a browser and layered on top of each other, which looks like this. So in this browser window, I'm not showing one VRED scene. I'm showing a combination of three VRED scenes. Once, the Genesis GCC 17, the Aurora, and some background information with three dummy characters over here. It's quite nice, right? So in this case, I don't need to exchange the data. I don't need to upload the data. I don't need to worry about security. I can just review it at the same time in one browser on another device. But at the same time, if somebody is working on each scene, I could see these changes live. So for example, if I select the hood of this Aurora, I can change the hood. And I can still see the changes of the hood in my browser window. So even if one of those persons is making changes in the foreground, in the background, on model A, on model B, I can see it immediately and in real time. So I think there's a lot of potential of taking advantage of streaming technology in VRED. And I'm really curious if this could be something where you want to work on or which could be interesting for you. I have some technical details to share. So if you're interested in the technical details, um, yeah, please stay on. I'm going to talk about them right now. For those um, who are not interested, was thank you for watching. 
And yeah, see you soon. So let's go on about the technical details, because if you want to realize this, there are many things you have to keep in mind. First of all, layering multiple instances of a stream on top of each other is working since video at 2021.3. Since then, we um, can also work with an iframe, and with an iframe, we can layer on top of each other with the so-called Z-index. So in this case, you have an HTML page, and on this HTML page, you can see that I have one, two, three, four iframes on top of each other. However, a bit of a challenge is, if I navigate around this, how does the browser know which car is supposed to be in front? The browser doesn't know it, it's just getting some streams. So I need to tell the browser somehow which of those streams have to be in front. And for that, it's great The HTML is supporting JavaScript and Vue is supporting Python, because in that scenario, I can just work with a with a function, which is sending to each VRAID instance a comment to execute a function, which is measuring the distance between car and camera, reading out this information, and piping it back to the HTML side, to JavaScript. And in that case, I can just define the Z space to be the distance between the camera and the car, right? quite straightforward in the end. Which means that if I send all this information all the time, doing this with this function over here, so if we are sending this information to all of the different streams at the, at the time, we always know the z-index of each layer. So in real time, or in this case every half a second, every half a second, I can adjust the z-index and um, the layering of my streams. At the same time, I need to make sure that my navigation is in sync. Because usually if I have one, two, three, four different sessions open, they need to be synchronized. Otherwise, my navigation would not work. So for that, I can take advantage of an inbuilt functionality of, of VRED, which is a so-called collaboration module. And in the collaboration module, I can start a collaboration session, which is usually, usually used when loading multiple VRED sessions on different instances, that I can see what another person is doing in another scene, or he can see what I'm doing in my scene. The collaboration session just requires an IP address to be connected to, so I just need, in this case, my IP address on my computer, where all of my um, instances are connected to. And there's an inbuilt functionality for my, um, for my collaboration session, which is spectating. So I can show the current view of a selected user. If I deactivate this function, you can see that right now I can navigate here and that and that window. Right? I can navigate around here, I can navigate around here, which doesn't doesn't make sense at all for this scenario. But that's a common behavior when I have multiple streams open. So I need to make sure that I start my collaboration session and I use my spectate function. And afterwards I chose the participant who should be the master for the navigation. And in this case, the master of the navigation is a transparent, has a transparent stream of VRED, which is running on top of everything else. Okay, so the synchronization is just done via the collaboration, and they are all spectating this point of view from this um, from this window over here. So if I navigate here, all the other cameras will automatically follow. Okay. So, I also would like to show you something else, because the, um, the general idea is to make this working out of the box. So right now, um, I would wanted to create a process where I can just click a button and everything will just run and will just start automatically. If I would not do this, it would, it would mean that I need to start one, two, three, four mirrored instances, I need to load one, two, three, four different data sets, I need to start collaboration, I need to start the screen um, at the same time, so that's running. And this is of course possible, but it's probably not really workflow, workflow proof. So what I did in the HTML site, I'm starting directly the collaboration. So whenever I'm loading my, here we go, whenever I'm loading my, my session, I automatically send a comment from HTML to the different browser windows that the collaboration session is going to start. And at the same time, 
I would like to start the VRAM scenes. But for that, I was using a so-called batch file, and this batch file is starting a VRAM instance on the computer, and um, um, it's starting on a different port, because if I would like to use multiple streaming instances on one VRAM PCs, they need to run on a different port. That's essential. Okay, so um, the default port is 888. So in this case, I was starting the four instances on four different ports, 8880, 8881, 8883. I also added a post Python function to it, which means that after starting the VRAD um, session, I'm starting a post Python process and I'm loading the data in here. So in this case, I'm lowering the um, Aurora data, I'm loading the GCC data, and I'm loading, um, well, in this case, the Genesis data for, for the background. I'm also defining a variable, so each VRAID, each VRAID system knows um, on which port it's running, so I can make some additional changes in a script right now. Because I also execute a script after loading a file, where I can define some extra functionalities. Hope you're still with me. So, I'm starting VRAID, I'm loading the scene, I'm defining the port, and I'm doing some extra scripts. The scripts are important because with the scripts I need to get the distance between the camera and the car. I also need to define which one is my, my master user, which one is a transparent layer for the navigation we need to follow. And I also define some um, port specific functionalities. For example, on port 888 I would like to see my, my car and I always would like to move my car by 1500 units to the left. On the second port I also would like to have a car and I would like to move it by 1,500 units to the other side. On both, I don't want to see the environment, so I'm hiding the environment. On the next port, I would like to see the environment, but I would like to hide my car. And on the last instance, I would like to hide my car and on my environment, then I just show my transparent screen. I do this, that in the end I have just one button. If I want to, just one generic scene and everything else will be automatically created once pressing the button. So the scenario I press a button, um, I need to specify two scenes in advance that I would like to compare or merge together and afterwards all of it is loading automatically. So um, I published the, the data with it, so please feel free to look at the data yourself. And um, yeah, I hope this was interesting for you. I hope this comes at something where you can work with or which could give you some um, um, some ideas on how to improve collaboration yourself and thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.